Listen to the uh, listen to the word, not how it's phrased. How it's phrased, anyway. But anyway, you know how today everybody is searching for their ancestors. You know, you see that on now. And that kind of hit me. And I sat down, and it just like, I sat down one day, and this is what I wrote. Searching my ancestors, I found myself back to the original place I came from. I found myself in the presence of love and light. I was a brilliant light being, nobody, and surrounded by love. I heard it's time for you to go into this form I made just for you. You will slowly forget where you came from, but you will grow with knowledge and wisdom. Then I heard, I said, how will I grow up if I can't remember where I came from? Well, there will be different trials in places in other forms like you that will teach you things. I have chosen these two forms to bring you f forth to that place. <clears throat> At times it will be hard and there will be times of fun and laughter. I will still be inside of you and I will never leave you. You will bring forth the love that I am and that I will flow from you and touch the hearts that I bring to you. I will always be there knowing that everything you are feeling and doing, even when you make mistakes, I will love and show you the way to go. Mm -hmm. That was part of what I got. And then I, the more I thought of God being energy, I started looking up what energy really means. And this is from the Webster Dictionary. Fourth of expression. Or utterance, potential forces. Inherited power. Powers, power especially in action. Strength or power. The capacity for doing work and overcoming resistance. And then in parentheses it said, see matter. So I looked up matter. And it said, what a thing is made from. <laughs> and I just put the fourth of expression with what a thing is made of. It's from the very life source, my energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it says, what all things were made from, whatever occupies space. Oh. I, and I thought, my God, you know, you know, and you That's look at, like Lynn's always telling us, look up words with the real meanings mm -hmm. on them, because it's really not what <coughs> we think we know, yes. and, and here we don't know. And another thing I was seeing with it all is, it's the time of the Aquarius age. And part of the Aquarius age is knowing who we are, information we are, we are who we are because we are in oneness. It will bring us out of the worst and it will bring us the best in people. Change can be painful, emotional time at this time, which is very true here. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I know I've gone through a lot of things searching myself with things. And I was seeing that the man with the water pot that opened up the age of Aquarius for mm -hmm. us, pouring this information and all mm -hmm. this stuff, it, and it was they, the disciples, were told to go and follow the man with the water pot. When they followed him, they were preparing for the Passover. The Passover means that they crossed over. The Israelites crossed over to the other promised land on the other side. This is our time to cross over to that spiritual life that we really are. Amen. And that's what I was seeing the water pouring out from the water pipes. Amen. 
he was opening up that age of Aquarius is opening us to go into who we really are. Right. The light beings that we really are. Yes. The Christ that lives and dwells yes. and the power that we inherited. Amen. Because we're a part of him, we're the very essence of life yes. dwelling in us, through us, around us, Amen. complete in us. Yes. And, it, and it was yep. just, it just blessed me. That was really, really good, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really good. All right. Let me just read you this note I read you this morning. I actually I just wrote this this morning earlier. I, me, talking about myself, Lynn Hayes. I get caught or I get trapped in judging people. Yes. Especially who, especially the people who are what I call corrupt or wicked. You know, I, I judge them because that's how I see them, corrupt and wicked. And, uh, or religious, I see them that way, you know. And, uh, so I, I, I guess I developed this judgmental attitude in myself and I'm trying to get rid of it. And I usually do it based on what they do. You know, I, I look at what they do and I say, okay, then that, that's my that's my my justification point that bless God I can judge them now because of that whatsoever. But you know when Jesus said love your enemies, uh, you gotta really right. turn the other cheek to people think about that. <clears throat> love, are you kidding me? Huh? I don't know yeah, if I can do that. Mm -hmm. What do you mean love my enemies? You know, do good to them that do yeah. you wrong. Huh? <laughs> you don't really mean all that. <laughs> you know, I judge them for what they do instead of what they are. Yes. You know, so that's yes. what we're talking about. What is what, what are, are we? What are all of us? What's everybody here on this earth? What are they? I'm not talking about who they are, what they're doing. I'm talking about what are they really? And the, and really the definition of that is not complicated. It's very simple. They are the tabernacle, the temple, the house God built to live in. Yes. Does that mean God ain't living in them? Because they're not doing what I think is the, the I mean, it, it's, I know this is a real conundrum. <laughs> I it realize is. the difficulty, yeah, I know the difficulty I grapple with in myself trying to think what I'm going to do with all of these. It's hard, you know, yeah. All these people corrupt and da 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 da. And it's hard for me in my own personal opinionated yeah. life. To step back and say, "Okay, God, it's yours. You do it," and and it, and have and find me a peace somewhere in that. That yes. is so hard yes. for me, but I have to come to that place. That's what I'm saying. Is I have to come to a place to realize, look, it's not my earth. It's God's earth. It's not my creation. It's God's creation. And surely, yes. I have to come to a place that I that I trust that God can do with what He has created to work with and do with them what he will do with them. And I have to come to that place. So I, I must uh, get myself trapped. I get myself trapped in the question of then, is this part, what is God without personifying? And, and again, I, I, I personally hope I realize within myself how difficult these things are. It's a grapple with them. I, I come to the place and I'm trying to trying to find some kind of uh, reason in it and it's, it's sometimes it's very very hard but nevertheless I have to I have to uh, I, I have to do that work that's my work yeah. Yeah. to be yeah. honest with you I'm using yeah. myself an example it's your work too yes. yeah. Yeah. it's everybody's work yes. Yes. and that is our work matter of fact the Apostle, the Apostle Paul said it this way work it out yourself mm -hmm. work out your own salvation yeah. and so uh, rather than being judged or being someone judging you or being judgmental. Now, this little book is the Emerald Tablets, which was found in, at, at around 1790s, I'm not sure. And when they found this, actually, it kind of uh, knocked the, a leg out from under the religious community called the church. And this little tablet did that because it uncovered some principles and things. And this is a translation of it. I, I don't totally agree with all the translations of a lot of the ancient stuff I read, 
because I, I see it in a different light. It's not that I'm trying to take uh, offense against what they say. It's that I'm trying to see it different for myself, and I'll try to explain what I mean when I say that. So I want to read this, this little phrase in here, a couple little paragraphs in here. He says, he who by progress has grown. That, be, that has become more and more uh, uh, an important thing to me, in me. He who by progress has grown. I know I am on the path to grow. I long to grow. I want to grow. I want to, by, by progress, I know it's step by step, line upon line, here a little, there a little. I know that. I, I realize that for myself. But I'm seeing that that, that growth, that progress of growth, brings me from darkness. Now, all darkness is, is ignorance. That's all it is, it's ignorance. In which I realize I have areas in my life that I'm ignorant. I have some areas I have some light. I have areas that I'm ignorant, and I have to work on those ignorant areas. I have to expose them to the light. That's the only way that the yes. darkness will be dispelled. And one guy said, how do you turn <coughs> off, turn the darkness off, flip on the light? It's, yes. it's that simple. So he who by progress has grown from darkness lifted himself or herself from the night into the light. Mm -hmm. Isn't yes. that good? Yeah. He, and here's what happens when he does that. He frees himself from the halls of emitting. Now that's a phrase. That just actually, it actually just means the pol polarities of the earth. And those polarities of the earth are both positive and negative. And many times, I think if you pay attention, I know I do in my life, the negative poles for some reason seem to pull me stronger than the positive yeah. one for some reason. And, I, and I, that's because the negative poles deals with the, the weighty, lower dimension earth, the body. The body is, it constantly is weighed down. Why? Because, well, first off, because it's a water vessel. Yeah. And you, you can always pour water to, in any place, and you know what it'll do? Seeks the lowest. It's going to seek the lowest point. Yeah. Well, that's my body. That's my flesh. It just, it just automatically it pulls itself down there. And so, but how do I pull it up? How do I transform it? How do I bring it to that place? It's by the light. Yeah. The light's the knowledge. So I'm dealing with the two aspects of my being, and I'm always dealing with the two aspects of my being. I don't care who I am. That's the physical aspect, and that's the psychological aspect. Then it's the psychological side of us that's starving to death. It's that side of us that's spiritual. The psyche is spiritual. It's the yes. spiritual part that needs training, needs education. It, it, it comes with that ability, but it doesn't come already there. We have somehow or another, we have always been taught or thought that it was already there. It's there only in potentiality. <clears throat> and that potentiality can be trained, just like he said, process of growth. Frees himself from the halls of, of a mentee. Now, in much older material, many, many ancient scriptures says that the soul is a prisoner to the physical body, within the house of the physical body. It's a prisoner there. I don't agree with that. I do not see it as a prisoner there. I see it as a tenant yes. there like a child. Yes. So living there like a child and all it longs for. It's not that there's a prison door holding it within you and me to keep it bound. That's not true. It is there. It, the only way it's bound is because it hasn't been trained or hadn't been disciplined or it hadn't been given that ability to grow or the process of growth. So he says, free of the flower of light and of light, guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from men to the masters of life. Isn't that good? There he may dwell as one with the masters, free from the bonds of the darkness of the night. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. So that, you know, that is where I long to be. That's yes. where I long to go. That's what I long to do, you know, in my life and, and with my life. I want to be free from those things. Mm -hmm. So uh, free as though we were prisoners in or to the physical body, many ancient stories use this analogy, either being dead, 
because of sin, have you ever heard that? You're dead because of sin? Are you? But you've heard that. I know you've heard that. Dead because of sin or dead in trespasses in sin. You've heard that too. Yeah. And we hear that idea of dead as in cessation of being, annihilation, not alive. And there's never a time that that's true. You're always alive. You're alive in dying. Mm -hmm. You really are. All you're doing in dying is transforming yeah. from one form into another form. That's all you're doing. Uh, and, you, and you're losing nothing and gaining everything. Each time, every process, every time that process is taking place, you're losing nothing, gaining everything. But it's hard to see that sometimes when we feel like we're in the, the throes of that death thing. So the analogy of being dead because of sin or dead in trespasses of sin or a prisoner to the human body, the problem is not prison, but the problem is being ignorant. Being in darkness. And being in darkness is what we all have to deal with. It's what I face. It's what you face. Yeah. So if you have a Bible, if you want to get in your Bible and open your Bible to John's Gospel, chapter 6, I'm going to show you a little passage of Scripture right here. Gosh, I remember a movie I saw. Oh, it's, it's had to been probably, it may have even actually been before my transformation experience, so it probably has been 45 or 50 years ago, and it was a movie by, oh goodness, what's the name of that actor? His name, his face is right there. Uh, oh, he's the one that uh, Robert Kennedy said that, uh, he was one of his favorite actors. Uh, he played in, usually always plays something like a Robert guy. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro played in this. This was a, probably one of his first movies. He was a young, I think his brother was a priest, and his brother got in a fight, and I think he killed his brother or something happened, and then he took everything that he had, put it in this black bag, hung it around his neck, and he was going out into the wilderness in South America or somewhere to uh, try to run from the pain, the past, what he had done. And so people went with him, and every time he would try to climb up uh, from one level to the next level, this little black bag around his neck would just keep dragging him back down. And finally the guys got so tired of him doing this that one of them had climbed up this real high cliff, and, and they got up there, and all of a sudden his bag slipped off, and he, the guys cut it away and said, leave it alone, and he wouldn't do it. He had to keep, and finally one old wise man said, leave him, he will have to carry that until he's ready to cut it loose. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous movie. I, I, yeah. I'd love to find it and see it again, but it was a Robert De Niro movie, and this had to have been over 40 years ago. But it has a tremendous message in it, just yeah. simply that the baggage that we carry is we carry it. Mm -hmm. God's, not, yes. God's not holding you there because of your trespass and sin. God's not... It put you and me in that kind of bondage. We do it to ourselves. So I wrote this note. In every life, in all of humanity, it's on its own journey toward enlightenment. Everybody. They're, they're where they at, at the level of light that they have. And sometimes that light might be mighty dim. And sometimes that light might just be gross darkness. But they are where they are. Yeah. It's, not, it's not knowing that we all are being drawn, and I, and I emphasize not knowing that we're all being drawn. Okay? If you found that passage, John 6, verse 44. You found it? Yep. John 6, 44. What does it say? No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Y'all see that? Yeah. Yes. That word in the Greek actually is the Greek hell, K-O, and it actually means to drag. Yeah. Mm. And so, and you know why? Because every one of us are being drugged. You know why? Because the weight of the physical that's always seeking the lower place has to have something higher than itself to constantly drag it until yeah. it finally gets to where it don't have to be drugged. But there, and you, and all, you, all you have to do, if you want to look it up, don't take my word for it. It's the Greek number 16-7. Hell, K-O. It means to drag. 
And I know that sometimes I, in my life, I was drugged and kicking and screaming. I ain't going. I don't want to. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> you ever felt that? Well, I have felt that a lot. So it's, it, they're being dragged by that which we are taught to call God or Father. And the closer that we get toward enlightenment or awakening, the more we realize that all the pain... We can call it evil or sin, whatever you would like to call it. Or all of the transgression, which the correct term is actually stepping to the side or stepping off the, off the path, uh, we call wrongdoing is the results. This, it's the results of our own ignorance. Mm -hmm. And by that, I just simply mean I really didn't know how to do what I thought I knew how to do because if I did, I would have done it different. And I would have got a different result. Right, right, yeah. So I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not blaming mom and daddy. Not blaming my teachers. Not blaming me. Anybody. I, it's nobody's fault. I did it myself. So it's the results of our own ignorance. In other words, just not knowing how to do what I'm trying to do. Not, not being taught the rules in the game called life. In the game called lives are the moves in the dance of life. Ignorance keeps us in conflict and battle, thinking we have to win the battle or defeat the enemy. In other words, the devil, the Satan, Lucifer, the old serpent. Now, that's a foolish game. That's a foolish idea that we, we get caught in. But we get caught in that. I mean, you know, the majority of Christianity is fighting the devil every day. Yeah. I mean, they don't know anything to do other than fight the devil every how they're doing it to fight the devil, Lucifer, that old serpent. And they never win. They ain't gonna ever gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> ever never gonna win. Until they can look in the mirror and say, Hello there, Satan. Hello, Lucifer. How you doing today? <laughs> and look in the mirror and let the mirror look right back at him and say, I'm gonna be doing all right if you wake up who you are. You know? So the devil, Satan, Lucifer, that old serpent. What what when in fact that which we are taught to call our enemy or obstacles, that which we are taught to call our enemy are obstacles to help teach us to learn the rules of the game that we call life. Amen. They're, not, they're not bad, they're not wrong, they're, not, they're there to help teach us. They're there as teachers to strengthen us, to help us in the journey, to help us in, so that we can get on about the business that God has put us here for, yes. the business of living, yes. living our lives to the fullest of its capacity. We either see conflict or contrast in everything. Yes. 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 And in short, see God in all. Okay, I want to read something that Alvin Boyd Kuhn said here in this book called the Alvin Boyd Kuhn Collection. And then I want to read you some of the things that I wrote on the notes. He says an allegory, and uh, you can you can you can actually come to grip with the fact that all of the scripture is an allegory when you really can embrace what an allegory is. An allegory or a myth is a fabulous story that's intended and meant to inspire and to strike that that's already deeper inside you. In other words, it's to bear witness to your soul so that you can be what God's really designed you to yeah. be. So you can rise to your opportunity. So you can be empowered to be and do what you are empowered to be and do. That's what an allegory is. So if we learn that, and I realize it's hard to it's hard to do because we're taught that uh, not to even think about an allegory. Yet Jesus said in, in Matthew chapter 14, he uses the word parabole, which is a parable, but parable is nothing but an allegory. It's a story that's meant to convey a, a spiritual truth. That's a parable or an allegory, same thing. And Jesus said he doesn't say anything without using an allegory. I tell you, I, I quote that. Y'all nod, but how many of you really know that it's there? Let me see if I can't find it, and I'll just show it to you. Um, and then you can look at it, and that way you already know. It's uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 13, verse 34. And here's what Jesus said. All things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. Everything he said is a parable. When he talks about Jonah, yeah. it's a parable. 
it's a story, and it wasn't meant to be literal, wasn't meant to be true as far as a historical thing. It's meant to be true as far as a spiritual truth, the principle that's there. Our problem being we have had a hard time finding the principle in it. All allegories, at any rate, ancient scriptural allegories, was a literary device designed to pictorialize a spiritual, analogical reality. I like that. They were all designed to pictorialize a spiritual, analogical reality in man's individual experience. So that you can find yourself in any of the stories. In individual experience in the form of an earthly, physical narrative of fictitious events. So we are quite warranted without further demonstration in assuming that the story of a crossing of a and is of a crossing is designed to carry its meaning into the area of our individual life to work there a proper miracle of virtually all scriptural allegories and other semantic modes of representing exalt, exalted truth and nominal realities have but one basic theme to comment upon. Here's the thing, the incarnation of the soul in a mortal body here on earth. So all of the stories, there are every one of them about that very same thing right there. The incarnation of a soul in a physical body here on earth. That's pretty, that's pretty phenomenal. So when we see that, we can embrace that and not turn away from it, then we begin to realize it's all about that. So when I say the soul, you, see, you think one thing. When I say the mind, you think another thing. And when I say the ego, you still say even another thing. But if we had a clear understanding of the soul, the mind, and the ego, that all three have exactly the same definition of each other. And let's see if I even have that. I did have it right here somewhere. Yeah, 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 let's see. I think it's here. You're in, y'all still in John's Gospel? Mm -hmm. All right, go with me to John chapter 3. and look at verse uh, verse 3. Jesus, huh? You found it? Yep. Jesus answered and he said unto him, Verily, verily, I. Everybody say I. 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 That is the Greek word ego. Now this is red letter edition. Who's that said that? Jesus. Jesus. This is the ego of Jesus talking. That word I. All you have to do is look it up in the Greek. It is the Greek word ego. It's the same as the Latin word ego. And, and, and really, here's what the word means. It means that which feels, thinks, and acts. That which feels, thinks, and acts. Think about that. What thinks? Does your mind not think? That's your ego. That's your soul. Does your mind not act? That's your ego. That's your soul. It's the same thing. They're the same identical thing. They just use different words to say the same thing. So notice what Jesus said. He said, I say unto thee, except thee, da, 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 da. See, the king, see the word see, that's the Greek, that's the Greek word I do, which comes from the root word ego. And I do, it actually means to comprehend and understand. Where does comprehension and understanding come? It's in the soul. It's in your mind. That's where understanding is brought to pass. It's not in your brain. Your brain is an organ processing all this when you begin to send it out into the body. That, your brain's doing a lot of stuff right now that you don't have a clue. Thank God. He's trying to get rid of all that stuff we just got through taking in. Consuming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess. Look at this. Look at... Flip over with me, John 17. 
John, this is called the high priestly prayer of Jesus. And you, know, and you can do your own research on this if you like and just double check me or find out for yourself. You'll see it. This is called the high priestly prayer of Jesus in verse 20, John 17, 20. Neither pray I. See that word I? That's ego. That's the Greek word ego. So it's the same. It's the, actually, I've got it, the number of it in the, in the Strong's Concordance, number 1473. All you have to do is look in your Strong's Concordance under number 1473 in the Greek section. And here's what it'll say. Ego, the self, that which feels, that which thinks, that which acts and reasons between the conscious and unconscious mind. Mm. That's your ego. That's your I. You know, Paul, Paul Brunton, I read, got really into him years and years ago. He was a, I can't remember if he was a Episcopal, Episcopal priest or a Lutheran priest. He's one of the one of those in high church. Uh, he went to India to get all those those Indians saved. And after five years of being in India, getting all them Indians saved, he come back from India monk, no longer a priest. <laughs> and all he did is he went over there to try to share them his way of life as they began to live their way of life. Which was quite different from his, and that, and of course, and they they taught him something. So he came back and he wrote literally volumes and volumes of books. I can't remember. I probably have eight, ten, twelve of his books. And some of them were written in lessons and sections on the dis difference between the self and the self, the difference between the I and the I. And the only difference between them was one was a capital, one was a small, a small s as a capital. And so that self that was the capital S, or that I, that's the big I, is that ego, that self, that mind, that soul in you that's been trained, that's been disciplined, that's been educated to be what it was designed to be. If it's a little I or a little self, then it's still a spoiled, unruly child. Ah. And have you ever seen a 60, 70, 80 year old spoiled, unruly child in an adult body? Mm -hmm. oh, they're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and what's wrong with the picture? Nothing. God doesn't judge it. God doesn't see it. You know, yeah. it's God don't ever give up. God, don't, He's long suffering. He said, "You'll get it. Yeah. You'll get it." <laughs> well, I, I don't yeah. want to wait. We'll get it. I bless God. You can get it now. You know? <laughs> yeah. So. I neither pray I for these alone, but for them which also shall believe on me through their word. That, that well, let's look, read that prayer. That they all may be one, as though your Father in me and I'm in you. I ego, there it is again. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you have sent me. And that, that. we need to say the same thing. This prayer is for you and me to do that very thing. This prayer is for you and me to function the way that Jesus functioned in His story so we function the same way. I mean, all you have to do is read it. It's not, yeah. it's not to try to say that, that it, Jesus, was special and you're not. It's trying to say that the creation of God is special. He's speaking yes. the mind of Christ right there. It is. It is the mind of Christ. It that's let this what mind, we're supposed to do. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. That's what Paul said. Let this mind be you. Not just be in you. Let it be who you are. And it's the difference between a small M in mind and a large M in mind. It's the same thing. Yes. Ego, mind, soul, it's the same thing. It's been put here to be trained. It's been put here to be educated. It's been put here to be disciplined. And without those ingredients, it will become a, a very unruly, uh, and many times, uh, we wish it would grow on up, or I, you know, I do, mm -hmm. so... For, for, the, for me. All right, let me go on with this. Uh, those, my, th those words should be embedded in us. They should be. And, and they're getting that way. Yeah, we're we're going to drive at it and drive at it mm -hmm. until, until, yes. we, until we get it. Uh, go with me to Genesis chapter 23. 
kind of do a Bible drill now. Genesis chapter 23. And look at verse 8. Everybody there? It says, And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind, you see that word mind? That's the Greek word nafesh. That's, I mean, I'm sorry, the Hebrew. That's the Hebrew word nafesh. Y'all see that? Genesis 23, verse 8. I'm going to wait on everybody to get it. Yep. Genesis 23, verse 8. Just underline that. You see it? That's the Hebrew word nafesh. Hold your finger right there. Go back to Genesis 2. 7. That's where we were at this morning. Just flip right back over there. Genesis 2, 7. Now come right back. That Genesis, just hold your place in both places. Y'all can do that. And in verse, chapter 2, verse 7, it's the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground, breathed to his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living nafesh. A what? A living mind. See, I mean, I always thought if they would do, if they would stick with consistency, yeah. it would start to make more sense. Mm -hmm. But they don't stick with consistency because it throws you off. It throws me off. <laughs> but if I begin to realize and memorize these words, I know these words. I realize the soul and the mind is the same identical Hebrew word, nafesh. It's not any different. You don't even think twice about what I just read and call it your soul. But yeah. you have to think twice if I call it your mind. Because you have, you have a difficult problem there. But I can read over here in Genesis chapter 23, verse 8, and he communed with them saying, it, it, if it be your mind, you don't have a problem with that. You just read right on down their mind. Well, their mind ain't trained or their mind's not listening. It's not disciplined. But if I said soul right there, you'd, uh -huh. <laughs> you'd, you'd, have, to, you'd have to back up. All right, you're holding your finger in both places, I hope. Look at Genesis chapter 26. Turn a page or so over there. Genesis chapter 26 and look at verse 35. Now, hold your place over in Genesis chapter 2. <laughs> so we're going to flip back and forth here. Okay. Genesis chapter 26. You got it? Mm -hmm. Verse 35. You got it? Mm -hmm. Which were a grief of mind. You see that? Uh -huh. Verse 35. Which were a grief of mind. Now that's the Hebrew word ruach. Now wait a minute. I thought nefesh was the mind. It is. I thought nefesh was the soul. It is. Then why does he say in verse 35 which was a grief of mind and use the Hebrew word ruach. Now, wait a minute. Genesis chapter 1. You're over there in the front. Look at this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Ruach. Hmm. You mean Ruach is the word for spirit? Yes. Is it the word for mind? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And this goes back and forth. This volleying back and forth and back and forth. It goes all through Scripture. And it's very confusing until finally you can see through all of the muddle and all of the, all of the garbage. You see, the Spirit has designed that the soul, which is the mind and the ego, be trained and grow up so that it can be into the head of what it's supposed to be and not stay a child, not be driven by every wind of doctrine blown here and blown there with just a little just a little bit of a wind of something, a little bit of insight of something, a little bit of energy of something, a little bit of charismania of something. And that's the way we are. 
constantly pull to and fro and don't know which way is what up and down. Just a lack of teaching and training. That's all it is. And when we come back, we're going to be taught, we're going to be trained. Now, let me, I, I can go on with this, this scenario and I can take you to the Word. One more, I'll do one more real quickly. Numbers chapter 16. You're, you're there, I'll do one more real quickly. And this just goes on and on. Numbers chapter 16. Okay, you there? Verse 28. Numbers chapter 16, verse 28. And Moses said, Hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. See that? I didn't do them in my own mind. It's the Hebrew word leb. It's not the Hebrew word ruach. It's not the Hebrew word nafesh. It's the Hebrew word leb. Do you have any idea what that is? Mm -hmm. That's the word for your heart. Mm -hmm. Is your heart, your mind, your soul, and your ego the same? Yes, absolutely. When you, have, when you have come to that place where you educate and you train and you discipline, you realize the heart. Uh, I have to do this. I have to put this on the board. actually look at the colors of the rainbow or if you actually look at the colors of the chakras that's going to be correct that that will be the chakra color green this would be red orange yellow green blue indigo and purple if you're looking at the chakra colors so green is always going to be here the lab that's the heart okay now did you go to Exodus chapter 10 did y'all find that mm -hmm. Let me get over there with you. In the, uh, Exodus 10, 19. And it says, And the Lord turned the mighty strong west wind, which took away the locust and cast them into the what? Red Sea. Red Sea. Now, uh, let me... Let me share this with you. Cast them into the the word of uh, the word red. Hmm. Well, <laughs> hold your finger right here and go with me to Genesis chapter 25. Um, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't know where it was going. It's not what I was planning on doing. But let's just look at it real quickly since we're here. Genesis chapter 25. Verse uh, Genesis chapter 25. Look at verse 25. Hold your, hold your finger over in Exodus. We'll come back. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. It says, And the first came out how? Red. 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 Here's how that's spelled in Hebrew. Alif Dalit Mim. And it's the word for red. It's also the word for Adam. Same word. It's 
There's no difference. It's also the same word for Edomite. Edom. E-D-O-M. Same identical word. Doesn't matter. Red. Okay? Now, go back with me to Exodus. And I'll show you here. Exodus 10. Exodus chapter 10, verse 19, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts, cast them into the. This word right here is the Hebrew word translated for red right there. And actually, it's the word kuf. And it's for kuf, it's a cheot, a wav, and a final fe. Kuf. And actually, here's what it means. It means green. Huh. Huh. Now, why in, why in the world did the translators call it red when it don't mean red? The Hebrew word means green. And here is the place, and all I'm trying to say out of all of this, whether it's the mind, the soul, the ego, all I'm trying to say out of all of this here is where it all has to take place. Every bit of it has to take place in your lab, in your heart, in your mind. It's the lab, the heart, the mind. It needs to be trained, needs to be educated, needs to be brought to the place of discipline. That's what we long for. I mean, we long for that. We are starving for that. There is a, I mean, literally, there is a famine in the world for what I'm saying to us. Yes. And it's up to us. It's up to us. If we are being shown this material, if we are having our eyes unveiled, then we need to shoulder up a responsibility that says, okay, if you allow me to see this, I will be this. Not just going to do it. I'm going to be it. I am going to stand up to this occasion, to this responsibility. And I will listen because right here, you have you and I, everybody has to come to the place, the crossing of your own green sea, your own yes. heart. It's in your heart where you work yes. out. Yes. It's in your yes. heart where you work in. It's in your heart where you do everything that you do. That's right. Mm. It's the only Amen. way to rise up into the top chakras or into the head. Yep. I see it right there. In. Is, is the red sea that the Israelites crossed the same as that? Yes. They didn't cross no red sea. Well, glory. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, you know, this morning, I put, yes. put it back up here with the board this morning. Well, we done, we done wipe, no, it was only yes. we wiped it off. Don't you remember I showed you the word for sea and the word for water? Yes. Only one glimpse different. they the same thing. Oh, You're a 98% water vessel. And you, yes. you have to cross this. Nobody yes. can do it for yes. you. You have to come to the place of the dealings of your own heart. Yes. <laughs> and we have to cross from the bottom to the top. The heart it actually is the core of the whole being. But yes, you have to bring yes. the, you have to bring the Lord. You see, I, there is nothing wrong with the sex organ. There's nothing wrong with your brain, your pineal uh, uh, pituitary yes. gland. These glands need to be brought together at the place of the heart and then you'll function on all seven cylinders and you will be a whole being. You'll be saved. You'll be fulfilled. You'll be all that you've designed to be. Oh, my yes. Running on all cylinders instead of hitting here a little, hitting there a little. And then all of those inner bottom lines that yes. separate those circles will be gone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Remember my teaching on yes, that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. It's yes. It'll just be a, it's all, all yes. the gates are open. All the oh, gates yes. are open. Amen. Open. open ye the gates. That the King of Glory and the Christ yes. might come into Woo. his own in that, that, you. Yes. Yes. Oh, amen, oh, amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Oh, glory. Oh, That's yes. exactly yes. right. When yes. you open your heart up oh, to my that. Oh, God. Yes. And now, what do you think the Psalms were saying when he said, Open ye gates? Yes. These are those dividers that keep yes. us 
Separate. They deliver everlasting doors. The heart is the it is all. Each one of those chakras has a door. They the door and the gates the same thing. Yes. Oh, my Lord. Yes. 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 Oh, 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 that's so good. Wow. Oh, Always yeah. there. You know, e even if you look, you can look at this in, that I'm telling you in a Moffat's translation of the Bible, and Moffat does not translate that, the Red Sea. He actually translates it reed because it's green. Yeah. Because the green reeds is what give the water the look, the look of green. The green, not red. Because the red always was Adam, Edom. Just like it says there when they looked the first one. The first one was Edom. It was red. Adam. It was a sail. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Well. Yes. It gets gooder and gooder. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. It does. So, they, so did, they did cross the Reed Sea. Yeah, every one of us crossed the Reed Sea. Every one of us are brought to that. And, yes. and, and we're brought there by being drugged. We didn't come willingly. Yeah. We didn't. I, I, ain't nobody come willingly, really. You get to a certain point, you become willing, but until you get to that point, yes. you're not really willing, you're drugged there. That's right. And then all of a sudden, you start working these things. You know, well, you know, this is for my greater good. And so then you put a little bit of will and enthusiasm with it. Prior to that, right. you're drugged there. That's right. Yes. You're drugged you're drugged you, may come, you may be drug kicking and screaming. You're drugged there until you yeah. see God. Until you see it. Until you see it. And when you start to see it, then you begin to open up your heart chakra. You begin to open up these other gates. Yes. And all of a sudden, look at that. What happens? And the whole thing becomes bloody. Look at that. Oh, there wow. becomes a, a river. Yes. yes. Woo! Yep. Right there. Yes. That's right. <laughs> or one. <laughs> 